back to a video series of building a CSS grid website uh, from start to finish. <clears throat> and so in this video, uh, we're going to cover creating the feature section here. Uh, you see this sometimes just right under the hero image. There are a feature of services or maybe a feature of articles or pages within the website. And you see this kind of three up structure. Uh, it's like the three across grid type thing. And uh, that's what we're going to make today. So let's jump right back into CodePen and we'll get cracking on it. <clears throat> so you can see we have our header navigation. We have our hero image here with the text over the top of it. And now we're going to jump into the feature section. Let's get a little bit more here. And this section we're just going to call features. This could be services, it could be anything that you want. Um, and what we need to do is we need to uh, again make an inner. So just like up here we created an inner wrapper. I'm uh, going to do that here. We're going to call it features inner. And then we need to make a group. So if you look at our, our design here we have each of these constitutes a group. A, a grouping, right? And the group has two parts. It has an image and it has some text. Uh, sometimes you'll see a button down here as a call to action. Uh, we can put that in. So first let's do, uh, we'll call it features group. Now this is going to be the div that holds each of the, uh, it's going to hold each like all of the elements together. It's going to hold the image and it's going to hold the text. Okay, so let's call this an article. You could use section or whatever you want to do. Um, then we need our two <coughs> our two parts and our two parts are going to be uh, the features uh, image and then the features text. Now you can go about adding the image in two different ways. We could come down and we could do um, image source and then we can use what I'd used before uh, which is the unsplash and we'll say you know like 800 pixels and uh, Let's just do a random, and that will work. And then we'll just have some lorem ipsum text here. So a paragraph tag, um, a little bit of text. So you can see our image and our text here, right? Now let's go ahead and do that three times. So we'll take the group, and I'm just going to copy and paste that one, two, and then we can switch out these images so that they're different each time. So we have three pieces of text here, and when the images show up, you'll see those uh, three images. That's all we need as far as our HTML is concerned, and maybe we'll go back and add an, a button at the end of this uh, at the end of the video. Let's go through our CSS down to the what I'm calling the three up features. <clears throat> and what we need is we need uh, one style for the features itself and that's what I'm going to use uh, to create the padding around here and maybe a maximum width or something like that to keep it centered. And then the features inner is what I'm going to uh, put the display flex on. So this is going to be our flex container here because our articles are directly inside of that. Um, so let's take a look at the features section. And so I'm just going to add some padding. I don't know, like four rim all around. And uh, we'll see where that gets us. It should be okay for now. We can adjust that as we move on. And then the features wrapper. 
I'm going to say display flex, and then instantly this should make our our images. Oh, it's not features wrapper, it's features inner. And that should put them side by side, our groups. Let's see. It is doing it, but you just can't see it. So I'll put them all side by side. And remember, I made these images 800 by 800 pixels. So what I need to do is I need to, to bring those down uh, to a more manageable size. So let's say um, I'm afraid to make them too small because I want them to be uh, be large enough to fit the space and what we can do is we can come down to the features image and then inside the features image uh, div any image that's inside there we'll say a width of 100 percent and then that should make them fit into the spaces here Let's see if it'll pick it up um, and what we want to do is we want uh, each group, so the features group here, we want each group to only take up <clears throat> uh, 30 30 percent or so and we want to each have some, uh, I want this one here to have some margin around it. So what we'll do is we'll say, actually it should go here, so features group is going to be um, flex. So what this property does, this flex property, it decides what do we do with this particular image. So I mean this particular group. So this is our our flex child, right? These three, and then what do we do with this child? The child can take up two two thirds of the space, and these two can take up one third together or we can choose to do a whole lot of different configurations but if you want to do a three across uh, you would do uh, zero one and then we're going to say thirty percent because um, we're going to put some margin around this and if you don't it'll kind of push itself out to the side here so um, you can see that as we move it's taking up thirty percent of the available space right? Uh, we're actually going to, let's use uh, viewport width units. So it's taking up 30, 30 viewport width units, which is essentially 30%. <clears throat> and then for the group, we're also going to have a, uh, a margin, but I don't want to put the margin on all of them, because if I do, then I get some margin on the outside. So when I have three things like this, if you put margin or padding on the inside one that's in the middle and you put it all the way around, or at least on both sides, then you're going to get some separation here and here, which is where I really want uh, to be able to get that separation. Um, you could even do uh, justify content space between. Not sure if this is going to help anything or not because I think already it's taking up the full amount of space so I don't think we need that. Uh, so let's say features group and then in SAS when you want to do um, you want to do a pseudo element you use the and the ampersand and then you say colon and then whatever the uh, pseudo element is right so we're gonna say the int child and this might be a little advanced or you don't know what the int child is Essentially, it's saying of these child elements, we are uh, going to select the first or the second or the third. Okay, so if we wanted to choose the first element here, we would say int child one, int child two, and int child three. So we can target these uh, without specifically um, having to name them up here. So you can see that there's only, uh, I don't have them named as feature group 1 or feature group 2. So it saves a little bit in the HTML and it makes it a little bit more extensible and easy to work with in the CSS. So we're actually going to do number 2. 
And for this one, we just want to put some margin. <coughs> uh, zero on the top and bottom. And then on the left and right, we can start with like two, uh, two rem, and we'll see. And you see how that puts a nice margin in between, right? So you can see that that gives us exactly what we need. Now, if you had four items, uh, that's going to be a little bit more difficult, and maybe you would need to put it on the second and the third, and then that would give you uh, what you're looking for. But you, in that case, you would only need to do half. Uh, if you wanted two rim in between, you would need to do a little bit of different calculation. Um, so just trying to figure out the easiest and most efficient way to get this space here, I go with uh, just styling the one in the middle. So that's the advantage of having uh, three items is that you can do that sort of trick. All right, and so now we need to, um, for some reason, our images are not showing up. So let's just go ahead and uh, we'll put in specific images here. So the way we do that is we say image equals <clears throat> and then a number and then we'll say image equals 800 okay. the reason this one is consistently not coming up if that ever happens then I just change the number to whatever um, to see if it'll come up. There we go. Okay. So now you can see <clears throat> we have our three up images. Uh, they might be a little bit small uh, for you. I'm not sure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a maximum width on here so that they only, you know, when they grow and shrink, so they look okay you know kind of up to here this is the kind of the sweet spot of them I would think right here uh, which is about a thousand pixels so that's kind of where we get our sweet spot this is the way we really want it to look uh, you could change the proportion of these <clears throat> if you wanted to do like uh, 600 by 400 <clears throat> then you could change the proportion of the image so that it's 600 wide and 400 tall uh, which is going to make it a little bit um, more of a landscape instead of a big square, uh, which I think I like that a little bit more. So let's we'll go through and do that. So each of our images now is a little bit squattier, takes up a little bit less room. It's not completely necessary for us to have those big images. Uh, so we have our three up across, and I'm going to go in here into the CSS, and I'm going to, uh, on this, on the inner, so the inside um, wrapper here, I'm going to put a maximum width of 800 pixels, and then when you do that, uh, what happens is it's going to stick to the left side. You see that? So it's only, it's shrinking, but when it gets to 800 pixels, which it has, to, it has to be the inside part that gets to 800 pixels, by the way, not the outside part, because we have four, four rim of padding there. So when it gets to 800 pixels, this inside part, then it starts to, it stops growing, and it starts moving. You see how it attaches itself to the left side. To get around that, what we do is, <clears throat> is we add a margin of auto, and let's see here. Computer's really working hard. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and restart it then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, 
let's try that again. Apologize for the delay. Right, so we have our CSS what state? Okay, so our max width state. Uh, so when it gets to 800 pixels, you see it's still it's moving. Okay, and if we add margin of auto, then what that does is it applies a top and bottom margin <coughs> to this. <coughs> excuse me, to this internal section, and what it does is it keeps it right in the middle. Look at that. Some people they like to add a zero <coughs> and auto because really what they want is uh, for these margins to be automatic. Um, I find that I get most of the time unless I need to change the margins for some reason uh, I get the exact same thing. So you can use either convention uh, but know that if you if you put margin uh, zero then it's going to mean that there's no margin up here. So if you've applied some sort of margin somewhere else uh, on this element then it's going to take away that margin. So just something to think about. So right now we have our, our three up uh, and then it doesn't get any wider than 800 pixels and it goes really well with our uh, our menu, it goes well with our header and then now we have kind of a features section here. Uh, Alright, well I don't think I'll go into uh, doing uh, the buttons but you could certainly apply a <clears throat> you could apply a uh, button for each group so you would just come down inside the group uh, the features group and then you would say you know button <clears throat> and then you would add a little button down there and then you would just style that button however you wanted to style it you could also use an a link if you're going to um, a different page uh, generally buttons are something that triggers something like a modal or um, something that's not necessarily a link to another page when you're using a link to another page you should use an anchor link and then style that anchor link to be a button uh, so that's just a little uh, semantics HTML semantics type of thing uh, from what I understand that helps people who have screen readers uh, to be able to move through um, and understand what the link is and that it goes somewhere. All right, well, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any questions about what I was doing or maybe uh, what I could have done or should have done, uh, please let me know. <clears throat> I'm always ready to learn and to put in some new techniques. Um, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.